International Islamic political group Hizbut Tahrir has submitted an application to the European Court aiming to overturn a ban on its activities in Germany. The decision was made by the German authorities in 2003 after the group was accused of printing anti-Semitic leaflets. However, the group has denied the charges, claiming that it was banned because of its growing influence within the country. Well, earlier on, Daniel Adam caught up with Jamal Harwood, who's a senior member of Hizbut Tahrir UK, to discuss more about the group's plan to take its case to the European Court. The original basis for this ban in 2003 is on the basis that a leaflet that your group, Hizbut Tahrir, produced contained anti-Semitic propaganda. Now, these are serious allegations. I mean, what did the leaflet contain? Well, first of all, that leaflet, um, they've effectively dropped this accusation of anti-Semitism. In, in the latest German government uh, court ruling, uh, they spoke about an obscure idea of, of uh, the idea of international understanding. So there's no further talk about anti-Semitism. You know, we're not an anti-Semitic party. Uh, we take a very strong and principled stance against Israel, which we don't recognize, and, and that's what they're against. But I would say that when they banned us, the German interior minister, he said that this is due to the growth of his Tahrir. He said our, our message is growing strongly and widely throughout Germany, particularly amongst the youth, and they, he actually quoted that in, in the reasons for his banning. So, so they're trying to bring excuses like anti-Semitism, but they've dropped that now. Okay, globally your group has been banned in many countries. I mean, why do you think this is, even though you say you are against violence? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, we're banned in countries like uh, uh, Libya, uh, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Iraq, and, under Saddam. You know, th these are, you know, Uzbekistan, of course. These are countries which don't accept any form of political opposition, you know, so this is the reason why the party is banned. Okay, um, you say your party doesn't work in Western countries to change the government. Um, clearly, you're against democracy. Um, so, what is Hizbut Tahrir actually doing in the West? Yeah, well, we, we say, and we're, we're, we're true to this, that we're working for return of the Khilafah, the Caliphate, uh, in the Muslim world. Uh, but we have a large presence in, in the West, and we believe that we should work with the Muslim community in the, in the West <coughs> to maintain a very strong Islamic identity, to maintain that position in, in, the, in, the, in the face of very strong opposition to Islam, I might add, and also increasingly to present a, a, a better face for Islam to non-Muslims. You know, when the caliphate, the Khilafah returns in the Muslim world, we want the non-Muslim society to have an understanding about what Islam is about. We don't want to have, you know, the Western media and politicians uh, inciting issues of conflict, which, which, which is going on at the moment. Okay, do you think the ban in Germany has actually now set a precedent for other countries like here in the UK, Britain, America? Mm -hmm to ban the group as well? Not at all. And I think that one of the reasons that we're taking a very, very strong view in opposing this ban, not only in Germany but now in the European courts, is that it sends a very clear message, not only to the German government but also to European and, and British uh, governments, that Hizbut Tahrir is a well-established party. We've been around 55 years. Uh, we're non-violent. We're calling for caliphate in the Muslim world. Um, you know, there's no basis for, for banning us. You know, you actually breaking all your own principles by doing this. Not only that, but we're being very transparent, you know, by the fact that we're going to these courts and actually prepared to stand up there and present what we're about also shows people that, you know, you're not, you're not playing with something which is, which is underhanded or, or is hidden or obscure. This is a, a well-established movement with a well-established call calling for an orthodox Islamic solution in the Muslim world. And, and frankly, if you're going to ban that, you've lost the debate, you know, and that's, that's really what it's all about. Okay, you're now taking the ban to the European Court. Mm. I mean, how confident are they yeah. that you will actually be able to reverse the ban? Well, the legal team we put together, which includes uh, Keir Starmer QC of Doughty Street Chambers, Matthew Ryder from, uh, and Kieran Beale from Matrix Chambers, uh, Taib Ali from McCormick's, uh, a very strong uh, legal team, and, and, and they're very confident that the appeal that we put together is very strong. Uh, there's some strong principles of law there. I mean, the right of expression, the right of association. You know, these right run to the very core. You know, the right to express your religious views, your political views. This is what this, this appeal is all about. If it gets thrown out, then it says something about their principles, you know, meaning that they don't actually stand scrutiny in the light of day.